Spencer Middleton's hands were shackled to a steel eye plate that had been lazily welded onto the metal table in the center of the interrogation room. It was barely larger than Roger's supply closet. One light overhead, no window, two folding chairs and a plastic camera tripod in the corner closest to the door. They had put him in an orange jumpsuit a couple sizes too big and somebody had roughed him up pretty good. He had a swollen shiner on his left eye that blended into the purple bruises covering most of his face. When he saw me, he grinned. Hey, you don't look like a lawyer. You sure as hell ain't a cop. Well, let me guess. You're the newest one they sent to kill me. It took a second to gain a sense of the man that I was about to talk to. The clock was ticking down 20 minutes, but those first brief moments set the trajectory. It could make all the difference. Here I was, just a few feet away from the asshole that had probably killed my niece. I needed to figure out a way to pry information from him. I was coming into this with nothing. No carrot, no stick. But how do I trip him up? Maybe he'll give me just what I want out of the goodness of his heart. I'd done a little research on the drive over. Spencer was a local who had disappeared a while back and joined the army. After an honorable discharge, he made it a point to mostly live off the grid. Save for a handful of run-ins with the law. He had a habit of starting or ending fights, depending on how you look at it. Made my move. Returning his smile and pulling out the chair on the other side of the table, from here I could see that the man had a nasty-looking scar straight across his throat. I sat and I faced him, waiting to see if he had anything else to offer. He didn't. So I went first. Who's trying to kill you, Spencer? He laughed softly and said, <laughs> Hey, don't I know you? I doubt it. Yeah, I do. He went to my high school, right? You're Donnie's brother. I maintained my poker face best I could, bearing the sting of hearing the asshole mention my brother's name. It wasn't time yet to show my hand. At least I had him talking. Hey, you said somebody's out to kill you. Why would someone want you dead? You do something? You know, when I get out of here, I'm gonna cut your face open. From here, from across the table, he pointed at the spot just over my right eye. To here. He dragged the point of his finger slowly down towards my neck. Took a long breath. But I'm not a cop, or a lawyer. Just an interested third party. Yeah, sure. There's a lot of those in this town, aren't there? What do you mean by that? Spencer relaxed in his chair and leaned his head back to stare at the ceiling. Man, come on. Just ask me whatever it is you came to ask, all right? Starting to think you might not know anything. Maybe the sheriff oversold you as some kind of badass when really you're just a guy. A guy that was in the wrong place and too dumb not to look guilty. Spencer looked me in the eye. He laughed a short staccato kind of laugh. <laughs> You're gonna use pride and ego down on me, Riggin? This ain't amateur hour. I spent years on the other side of this. I've interrogated Al-Qaeda in a cave in the desert. Shit. And this asshole had my number. Look. I'm not gonna bullshit you. Quit trying to work around it and ask me the fucking question you came here to ask me. This asshole was running the show now. We both knew it. Might as well take a shot. You know what happened to my niece? Vanessa? Spencer held up both palms. Is that supposed to be a no? I asked. That's supposed to be a let's make a deal, Clarice. Quid pro quo, right? Alright. What do you want, Dr. Lecter? And more importantly, what are you offering? I can tell you exactly where a certain missing teenage girl went. Where you can find her, and you can ask her yourself what happened. I can draw you a fucking map if you want. In exchange, I want something from you. Something small. Something you won't ever miss. My heart was pounding. It took every bit of restraint I had not to just jump across the table and strangle the answers I wanted out of him. Okay, I said. Name your price. Spencer leaned in and spoke each syllable deliberately. 
I want one of your teeth. He smiled and laughed again. What the fuck did you just say? It's all I want. I want you to pick a tooth, any tooth. Let's pull it out for me. You got dozens, right? You gonna miss one? I don't think so. You pull out a tooth for me. That's exactly where you can find her. No, if you burn in hell, you piece of shit. Really? You value your teeth more than your own family. <laughs> Good thing your brother isn't alive to see you make this choice. I knew he was baiting me. And I wish I had been smarter, but I wasn't. I jumped out of my chair so fast it launched across the room and swung a wild right hook that would have broken bone if it had landed, but he dodged it by an inch. Caught me by the fist and used my follow-through to pull me across the table. My face hit the metal and before I knew it, he had hooked his arm under my chin. In a single motion, he twisted me onto my back and locked his arm against my windpipe, squeezing tighter and tighter until I started to black out. I tried to scream, but there was no way air was coming in or going out and the world went black. I knew I was done for. That son of a bitch was faster and stronger than I could have expected, and I'm glad I'm more lucky than careless. I didn't hear the deputies come in, but if they had waited a few more seconds to pull me away, well, I might not be here right now. As they helped me out of the room, Spencer let out a loud, gleeful cackle that followed me all the way into the lobby. It was getting dark by the time I patched up and was leaving the sheriff's station. I had decided to spend the rest of the day getting shit-faced, that asshole, all but confessed to killing Vanessa, but that wasn't enough. He wanted to, he needed to, rub it in my face. And I let him. I had the who. It's not the how, where, or the why. For a guy like that, do we even need to be a why? Armed with this information, I wasn't exactly in a hurry to go back to see Jamie. The only bar in town was closed for some kind of bullshit holiday, so I decided to celebrate alone. The bottle in my go bag might not be enough, I thought. So I went back to that shitty gas station. The one on the edge of town. The sheriff was pissed at me for what had happened. I didn't blame him. I lost my cool. You can't do that if you're working on the side of the law, which for the time being I was. Couldn't help but wonder how hard it would be to get away with killing Spencer while he was in custody. When I got to the gas station, the clerk behind the counter didn't even look up from the book he was reading. He was considerably younger than me, with bags under his eyes like he hasn't slept in days. A pair of crutches were laying on the counter next to him. Bought a bottle of whiskey and a pack of smokes. As he rung them up, I asked, Hey, you know a good hotel near here? No, he said simply as he handed me my change and went back to his book. All right. Thank you, Mr. Personality. When I got back to my car, I tried to look up the nearest place at the cheap hotel. I was reminded that this part of town doesn't get cell or internet service. All I wanted to do at that moment was drink and shower and sleep, and after a few minutes of thinking about it, I decided I could do with two out of the three. After getting sufficiently inebriated, I put my seat into a reclined position, and I fell into a deep, dreamless sleep. I woke up the next morning still a little drunk to the sound of my cell phone ringing. When I checked the caller ID, I couldn't understand what I was seeing. Donnie. Cell. It rang a couple more times while I sat up and tried to wrap my head around the moment. Where was I again? My car? What happened yesterday? The weight of it all came crashing back into place in an instant. Vanessa's killer was sitting in a cell somewhere laughing at me. The phone continued to ring. I looked again, but this part still didn't make any sense. Who was calling me from my brother's phone? And how? I answered. Hello? Hey, Eric. It's been a while, huh? What the fuck? What the fucking fuck? Who is this? I'm not sure how long I've got. I've been trying to get through to one of you for a long time. I asked you a question. Who is this? You know who this is, Eric. My brother's dead. And when I find you, I'm gonna make sure that you are too. Always gotta be the badass, huh? Remember Merlin? Merlin. I hadn't thought about him in a long time. So when we were kids, sometimes we would play superheroes. We'd take turns being the bad guy. I always wanted to be Batman or Wolverine, but Donnie. Donnie always wanted to be a wizard named Merlin. He started his own mythology around the character. A time-traveling wizard that rode a motorcycle. 
When I got a little too old to play make-believe, he started drawing comics about the guy. Never told him, but I found them. I read a few. They were impressive. Anybody could know about Merlin. Did anybody know I stole a car in my junior year? But you took the blame for it. A chill ran down my spine. Suddenly the car felt, felt way too cramped for me. I opened up the door. I tried to step out, but a dizzy spell almost put me on my ass. I held onto the roof of the vehicle until it passed. And I put the phone back to my ear. Who is this? Told you. It's me. Tell me the truth. You're looking for Vanessa? You've got to find her. Look, okay, I watched my brother die. I saw his body get put in the ground. I died. And then they came for me. And they put me here. Where is here? I don't know. But I do know that they're watching you. They've been watching you ever since you came back. I think they haven't decided what they're going to do with you yet. They're both running out of time. You have to get to Vanessa before they get to you. No, and tell my kids I love them. There was a loud crackle from a phone and then it disconnected. I stared at the screen like an idiot for way too long. Then did the only thing I could think of. I dialed the number back. At that exact moment, I heard a cell phone ring from somewhere just beyond the gas station. This son of a bitch is here. I ran back towards the sound of the ringing. It was hard to pinpoint exactly where it started, but I knew it was coming from somewhere in the woods, beyond the tree line. I ran straight into the forest, making a mental note on the way to check out that large, fresh mound of dirt next to the dumpster. It looked like something had been buried there recently, but I couldn't afford the distraction just yet. How many times had it rung? It was four, five. The ringing continued, now somewhere much deeper in the woods. I followed, trying to determine exactly where the noise was coming from. As I ran further in, the ringing became more of an echo all around me. I checked the phone still in my hand and saw the message. No network detected. Emergency calls only. The ringing got louder. Then it turned into something else. No longer ringing, more like a loud chirping, like an insect of some kind. And it morphed into a deafening noise. Somewhere between a roar and a scream all around me. I pocketed the phone and instinctively reached for my piece. It wasn't there. I left it in the car. All right, look, I know how this sounds, okay? It's, it's crazy. I'm not going to pretend that it isn't, but it only got worse. The temperature in the spot started to crank up like I was next to an invisible fire, ready to consume the entire forest. I had the sensation that I was burning up and about to be cooked alive. And my fight or flight response kicked in on overdrive. I picked the direction and started running as fast and as hard as I could. The heat got further and further away as I jumped over logs, limbs, and ditches and finally caught a clearing. My lungs were ready to explode by the time I stopped and collapsed to my knees. I threw up. I didn't have long to relax before I heard something crunching through the forest in front of me. I pushed myself to my feet and I scanned the area for any kind of weapon, but there wasn't anything worth grabbing. Not a rock or a decent stick or even a tree nearby worth hiding behind. But uh, what was I thinking running out here in the middle of this clearing? I was in the dead center of a nearly perfect circle the size of a tennis court. No trees, only knee-high grass, basically a sitting duck. And I saw it. A bear at the edge of the trees, right in front of me. I saw that it was a bear. I say that it was a bear that I saw, which is technically true, but also not. It looked at me, and I was convinced that I had lost my mind and gone crazy, because in that moment, nothing made any damn sense. The thing I was looking at was, best I can tell, uh, an enormous grown man, nearly seven feet tall, wearing a tan teddy bear costume, complete with an enormous felt head and had black button eyes the size of saucers, like some kind of school mascot from a nightmare. It was covered in dirt and leaves, and when it saw me, it started waving excitedly. Uh... Hey, I said uncertainly. And then it turned both its middle fingers up to me and did a little dance. Uh, hey man, I'm, I'm kind of lost. The bear didn't say anything. It just pointed at me. And then in its crotch, it started pelvic thrusting in the air. God. I wish I had my gun right now.